You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. When I go to Sacramento, I will pump up Sacramento. Sacramento. Some say the news is fake. Others say it's real. These two don't have the time to check. Instead, Turner Sparks and Michael Ira Kaplan turn to comics stationed around the globe to be their eyewitness reporters so that you can know what's really going on. This is Lost in America. All right, everybody, welcome to Lost in America, episode 265. My name's Turner Sparks. And I'm Mikael Kaplan. You can find me at turnersparks.com. You can find me in Australia for the next two weeks doing stand-up comedy at the Melbourne Comedy Festival in Sydney, in Melbourne, all over the place. Go to turnersparks.com for tickets. You can find Kaplan at Cap in America on all social media platforms. Kaplan on the podcast today. We're talking, we will be talking in a few minutes to Anton Timoshenko. He is our old buddy, the stand-up comedian out of Kiev, Ukraine, and he's there currently. And we want to know. We talked to Misha a few times, also in Kiev. Anton's um originally Ukrainian, might have a different experience. And so we want to see what what what's going on with him too over the last month of of this war breaking out. But Cap, before that, yes. This is a totally free show, but if you want to support this show beyond just listening to it, which I know you do, <clears throat> excuse me, go to patreon.com slash lost in America. And for $5 a month, you get Cap and I doing a full throttle stand up comedy or not stand up comedy, full throttle comedy podcast three times a week. We've taken two here. weeks off. So now's the best time to get in because. We, we we're we feel, trying to get we're, we're trying to regain the trust of our audience. Yeah, we feel bad. We don't like to take time off. You've been traveling. You might have COVID over there. We're not sure. But we are going to come back with a vengeance this week. We're going to come. We're going to have some bangers of some episodes. We got a lot. I've got I've got a lot of notes in the past few weeks. So we're going to have some really good episodes coming up. Lots Very good. And if for, so I did get a COVID test yesterday. I do not have COVID. I got the test oh. because I'm flying to Australia tomorrow and they made me get the test. I've been in las vegas and then reno for the past two weeks we have done i think 20 something shows in two weeks and this is just the wear and tear of life on the road as a stand-up comedian in my voice right now none of this is coronavirus i could never do that i have no endurance i could never talk as much as you've been talking so well i think you could but most (laughs) people could not it is a lot of talking kaplan um, so go to patreon.com slash lost in America. Support us. Join the good people. Join Sugar Brady. Join Tug. Join, join yeah, Will t- Prechuck. Join Drew Fralick. Join Dennis Owens. Everybody. Dennis Jennifer Owens. Mouse Peak. All the no, she's out. All the oh, big ones, though. Sorry. She unsubscribed. Um, join all the other people. Now, Kaplan. And don't unsubscribe because we're gonna dox you when you do like that. <laughs> that wasn't off. on purpose. You just mentioned someone who doesn't subscribe. To and I want to say thank you to Tug, who's a Patreon subscriber, who gave us a five star iTunes review. Do that as well, people. Thank you, Tug. Anyway, now, Kaplan. Yes. Um. So I don't. I mean, this. We usually talk about what we know about this topic, what we don't know about this topic. The topic today is the war in Ukraine. I think we all know as much as everybody else knows. So I think we can skip all that. I have. There hasn't been news in the last couple of days because Will Smith hit Chris Rock in the face <laughs> that, that, at the Oscars. And for all the, we know in our news, the war ended. The war ended when that happened. Will Smith ended the war. He deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. It, Ukraine got concerned. knocked off the front pages of all of our newspapers. I kind of forgot it was going on because of that. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, there was a snafu at the Oscar ceremonies <laughs> in Hollywood, California. And so um, but but besides that, uh, there's been there has been stuff. There's p- alleged peace talks going on right now. Constructive talks. I heard constructive was the big Const- word. Well, but uh, but Secretary Blinken out of the United States says they're not constructive. He mm. says it's a farce. Unconstructive. So, so our Secretary <laughs> of State says these talks are for uh, this is a show that Russia's putting on. But hopefully they are constructive between Ukraine and Russia right now. Also, Russia has um, kind of I don't know if they've announced this or this we figured this out through intelligence, but they're somehow changing their strategy and no longer focusing on Kiev because That's they don't think heard. they can take it over. So they're now just saying, ah, w- we'll take the east. Just give us the east and, and we'll, we'll <laughs> go home. East, we'll call it even. They also, I heard they <laughs> Which said doesn't not- seem like a good deal to me. 
If no, they just gonna, said, hey, give us a third of, your, of America and we'll take off. I'd be like, no, it's like when you ask for when you negotiate, when you ask for something ridiculous to start with and then you try to get something a little less ridiculous. So, yeah, but I also I also heard that they're, they they announced they're not going to nuke anybody. So that we're going to I don't know if we believe no matter them. What? Well, they said unless we're attacked first or nuked first. So they said, well, that. of course. But th- isn't that what we already knew? Well, no, I think we were afraid that if we, you know, went in and uh, helped the Ukraine too much, they would nuke us. That was the whole thing, right? Weren't yeah, you but Kaplan, helping the Ukraine in their definition is attacking them. <laughs> oh, so you're saying it's that's not that's a bogus announcement. I just felt yeah, it's a nothing. It's a nothing announcement. <laughs> this is why I'm a bad negotiator. <laughs> I would have, I would have been like, oh, great, we accomplished something. So that's don't nothing. To me. All right. Okay. Anyway, Anton Tamashenko, a uh, good friend of ours, a great stand up comedian. It's good to see him. And really it's good. good to see you, man. How yeah. you're in Kiev. How you doing? In a real bunker. Yeah. Hello, guys. I'm pretty fine because for now in Kiev, it's, uh, bo- it's bombed not so often. Uh, comparing with uh, other cities in Ukraine, maybe like, I'm not sure, accurate, I know, three or five uh, bombs in a day. It's a usual day in Ukraine when you have like three or five bombs uh, bombing like uh, around your city. Wow. For example, if you compare it with Mariupol or Chernihiv, and these cities are completely destroyed by Russia bombs. So I feel pretty nice. <laughs> it's difficult, oh my gosh. difficult to... Uh, Comparatively, difficult. you feel good. So I didn't yeah, I'm, realize I'm, this. Can I, can I say I create... Uh, I, you can... Mm, uh, I create new show. I, as I think your show names Lost in America, and we can make show for Russian soldiers in Ukraine. It uh, names Lost in Ukraine. That's only for <laughs> Russian <laughs> Russian soldiers. At least sixteen thousand uh, people <laughs> from Russia can be a part of the show for now. As, as That's I know. well, I read it's yeah. actually according to the Kiev Independent, there are now 17,000 dead Russian soldiers. Probably. That's incredible. Uh, Russians really like yeah, Russians really like to have a dead in Ukraine. So this is uh, the most comfortable uh, place for dead Russians in the world. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if any of them are comedians, this. interview them first on that podcast and then Well, they're dead, you, Kaplan. Well, before you kill them. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Capture okay. interview, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm think, I'm uh, thinking about in future after our victory, try to make uh, some kind of shows on TV. Like, uh, do you have this show names uh, Dance with the Stars or something like that? Yes, Dancing with and the we Stars. Can, we are going to make a show like uh, rebuild our country with uh, uh, slaves from Russia or something like that. <laughs> like we. we take- a couple of catchy you title. Couple, yeah, you have one a superstar from Ukraine and one captured Russian soldiers, <laughs> and they together try to build, uh, I don't know, a bridge. They, For example, they, a bridge. they dance, make it dancing with the stars. They have to do a dance yeah. competition. <laughs> well, he wants because stars are do nothing for now, so they need to do something after. Well, yeah, yeah, a couple of stars are really nice in Ukraine. We have, we have, uh, I know how many, but uh, maybe 10 uh, s- a very, really popular uh, song artists who are now in army. They take the weapon and defense ourselves. So, so that's wow. pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. So what about you? So you're saying, because um, we talked to, an, a, you know, Misha Kalin, who's a Belarusian yeah, comedian, yeah. but he lives in Ukraine. I lives in Kiev about two weeks ago and at that this, time that's very sorry that's very funny how misha tried to escape from russia you know <laughs> first <Right. thing> he <laughs> yeah. was in belarus <laughs> and escaped there from russia russia came here russia is uh, everywhere he, russia is uh tried to catch this michael i think this is a purpose of russia they yeah did. i think I their mean, whole they're, board well, everyone is telling misha Everyone's telling Misha, we don't want you here next. Uh, no country wants Misha right now. <laughs> no one will, no yeah, one will yeah, accept no him country. as a refugee. <laughs> no country skips Misha, right? Yeah. And so when we talked to him a couple of weeks ago, though, there wasn't yet bombing in Kiev. You know, that was a, a couple, two or three weeks ago. Now you oh, say yeah. th- three, four, five times a day, you hear you hear him? Uh, uh I hear the sound of you know, how to explain this uh, stuff. For example, sometimes we really have a video how the rocket uh, attacked our some kind of buildings, 
like one video or two videos. But the sound of the bumping you hear all the day, and you not um, you never know exactly where is it because sometimes um, our uh, journalists will not say in the accurate place because if they say the accurate place, Russia can read this information and uh, how to say in English like. Uh, it will help for Russian artillery to get more accurate bump next time. Yeah, so intelligence, this point of, we would call it, information. Yeah, so Because they don't, they don't know where they land, is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Russians are stupid idiots, so they... In, <laughs> what kind of oh, weapons do they have? They don't, know where, where where they don't know where their own bomb, their own weapons are landing? Sometimes. Sometimes I think, yes. Are you in the... Which side of because, Kiev? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say, which side of Kiev are you on? Because I know when we talked to Misha, yeah. he said that uh, he was on the side that wasn't, it was a little safer where the bombs I'm were in landing. A, I think, I suppose I'm in a safe side. I'm in center of Kiev, and it's pretty away from the uh, neighborhood that always on attack and wasn't like on the beginning and an attack after like a couple of days ago. Um, but, uh, for example, uh, I have an underground metro station, like in a 10 minutes from me, by a walk, and it was bombing. So I decided, well, maybe I will not uh, walk in so many times on the streets. Maybe I'll just still sit in a basement. That's much more better <laughs> uh, so to have a bed on the street. The metro station, a 10, min 10 minutes walk from you, has, was yeah. bombed? Yeah, Lukyanovka station. You, you can see photos in the internet. Yeah. Okay. And when that bomb happened, where were you? One more time. Where were you when the bomb hit? Oh, I was in the basement. Uh, they always, uh, they not always maybe, but mainly they bomb in at the night or in the morning. And and this time we have a, oh, how to say, Commandant uh, Hodina, the special hour when people cannot go on the streets. Uh, the oh, yeah, you have a curfew. Uh, curfew, yeah. Maybe curfew, curfew is yeah. the word. Uh, and this time I always said basement. I live in basement. You have a basement in, in your apartment? Uh, not, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty <laughs> funny story because I live for now in a hookah bar. You know, it means hookah. Sure. <laughs> hookah. Like, hookah. Yes. Smoke yeah. Smoke hookah bar. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is my friend's, uh, hookah bars. And I remember about that, like after three or four days of our begin and I come here and it's pretty comfortable place because it has sofas and it has some places and TV and the uh, fridge and some stuff for cooking so for the start of this situation uh, maybe like 23 people live here for now it's wow. like 15 14 people live here some of people just go abroad like women and children and some of guys decide to live in a flat because they say that's okay that's fine i uh, some of guys decide that uh, it's better to uh, live on sofa uh, and that at home, <laughs> then leave it not so comfortable so far in the. I, I don't like to basement. live the house, so I understand that. Almost, yeah. yeah it's it yeah. safer though the hookah bar because they have a basement. Is that is that the reason from where you? It's safer than your apartment because it has a basement. Yeah, it's much more. Yeah. It's yeah. much more safe because my apartment uh, don't have basement, and a lot of basements in Ukraine are not comfortable because it's old basement without any sofa or some kind of any internet or i know even water so i think for now i'm living in a super vip luxury basement comparing with uh, some other kind of basements we have in Kiev, for example this, so, is, this is why you become a big time comedian you know yeah so this, you because need i'm a superstar yeah, yeah because they I'm give you a place the to richest crash. one <laughs> the, <laughs> the richest comedian treatment. in ukraine <laughs> And who are the other oh, yeah. people? So you said there's 14 or 15 people all living together. Yeah. How tightly are you? Is it all in one room? Uh, this one uh, uh, room, but it's pretty wide. I don't know how many bar. meters. It yeah, there's hookah bar. It's hookah bar comfortable for uh, sitting like. Who always have nice couches, hookah bars. They always have like very. Like, <laughs> oh, those, that's like, true. So can they hear you? I'm wondering right now as you're podcasting, because my wife can't stand to even be in the other room. But if you have 14 people <laughs> right next to you right now, it must be annoying for them that you're podcasting. It's pretty annoying. To, it's difficult to sleep and... Uh, uh, I even start joke. Uh, okay, one more English word. How to say this? Uh, the air uh, 
Ooh, ooh, how to say? Oh, it? the air um, sirens or air raid. Air, air, raid air sirens, sirens. Yeah. yeah, air sirens. Air sirens are not comfortable for sleeping, but for me, it's even much more not comfortable. It's uh, my friends always uh, the sound when he sleeps, uh, snorking. Uh, oh, snores. Uh, oh, yeah. That's snores. Worse. Yeah, it's really loud. It's even more loud than air sirens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you and my wife would really get along. She has the same issue with me. Well, let's send him some noise canceling headphones. For his. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. you need some of the. She, you need the noise canceling headphones. My my wife wears them all around the house. <laughs> She's working. I, I she asked for them for Christmas. <laughs> his his sound will destroy his uh, headphones. I, I'm sure about that. He's too oh nice. Are nice. they all friends of yours from before? The people who are staying you know, there. It's, are, it's so it's so strange to say that. Oh, it's not comfortable for me for sleeping when somebody snores. And the same way, people can uh, same time people can sleep because their houses are bombing right now. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it's very difficult time uh, to find the. Uh, level of humor you can do because I'm so comedian and I put some jokes on Twitter and Instagram and maybe some I prepare a couple of videos I will publish in, in the next days and it's difficult to find this level because you always know that you live I live in a, in my it's only it's a, a month going all the situation and uh, you just starting to feel okay this is type of my life for now i live like this in basement all this stuff and it's become some kind of usually for you you know so, something not yeah usual yeah so, so it's a little bit difficult they say yeah they say what they always say ta uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy yeah but because right now there's right no now. time you don't <laughs> no just don't time. make fun of any women's hair loss no, it's my advice to you, but no. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Don't make fun of any women for losing their hair. That no, that's oh, yeah, that's the yeah. one line you uh, can't yeah. cross. In a... That's only the stroke uh, situation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, even I'm, in I'm Ukraine, sure. they know about the even in Ukraine. Yeah, you can make fun I'm, of the war. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Will Smith are working on Putin, and it was Putin plans just to. Uh, Change the, Change the narrative. The news. It works. Oh, yeah, this shoot. is a great. This is a great angle I haven't heard yet. That Putin <laughs> orchestrated. Putin got to Will Smith. Surely, um, I am so completely. What wounded. is your daily life like now? Are you? Um, how uh, much time are you okay. spending in the in the basement in the hookah bar versus walking around on the streets and that kind of stuff? Yeah, Crazy I shopping. spend ninety percent of my time in a basement. Sometimes I go to the shop supermarkets and uh, uh, one of the, my uh, nice idea before war that I don't have cats and dogs because we have a lot of people in Kiev who have dogs and they need to walk with these fucking dogs on the streets All right. and they always <laughs> walk I hear Syrians just uh, sounds real loud and I see like a couple of people just walking in the dogs because these dogs need to have a shit on the street, <laughs> not in a house. And it's so strange for me. And I ne I will never get a dog after war because for now I know that a dog, it's a one more chance to die in Ukraine because of Russia. <laughs> I never thought about that. Yeah. Okay, my internet connection. Do you hear me okay? Yeah, we got right you. Here. It's okay. Right for me, you were cutting out a little bit, but we got. I got it. We don't need to... I guess you, the people don't need to pick up the dog poop, though, yeah, is fine. what I was thinking, if you're in a war zone. Well, yeah. this is why I've never gotten a dog. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Yeah. Because you're... what if Putin hit the tax in New York City? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'll exactly. live. Kaplan will be dead. I have a dog has got to go out, but I won't pick her up during a war. I won't pick up the poop. I won't care about that. If there's a bomb going to take out the town yes, area. Keep moving. I wish I wish all Americans before I uh, start the thing. Oh, I, ha I want to have a dog. Just thinking one time about Putin. Uh, just there one you time. <laughs> Who wants you to have nowadays. a dog too? We'll tell you that much. <laughs> to kill you, to kill you moral uh, easily. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only, that's the and yeah. what? A, so you spend ninety percent of your time inside. Yeah. What uh, about? And Kaplan asked, but I don't know if you heard. But these other people that live with you are these all? Were these friends of yours before the war? Or are these just random people? Uh, I, it's like uh, three. Three people from this collective, my friends, and other just random people that we communicate now. Now we're friends, now we're old friends. Now Ukraine is a big family and each people try to help everyone. Uh, my days, my uh, usually day, 
my structure of my day, it's like maybe 10 or 20 percent of time. I'm uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so difficult to uh, to calculate all the percents because different days, for example, like one day I can spend for volunteering all the time because I'm looking for aids, I'm looking for food, I'm looking for uh, ammunition for my friends and I spend all the day for this. Some kind of day, I don't have this volunteering uh, possibilities because different situations, like because of bombing or just I don't have money or I can I cannot find some kind of stuff. So I'm just uh, start trying to not uh, get insane just get some food maybe what even that, play what, something yeah. what does that mean though looking for food ammunition. looking for money looking for ammunition how do you look for that stuff oh the different ways to find for example when it starts when it starts i mean like you're first, looking to buy it or you're looking for it for free like someone will give it to, to you no nah, looking to buy and to help uh you know, I'm a comedian. I'm a famous comedian in Ukraine, so I have money. <laughs> yes, I have, a, I have some of money, so I have money for food and for AIDS, for example. Yeah, I try to find it to help someone who will not help this stuff. And sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not possible. Uh, you just look at it in the internet, you just uh, take a car, go for a like, kind of supermarket, grab some food, take it to the other side. Like for one period of time, like one week of the time of this war, I became like a like a taxi uh, support online manager because I'm I'm looking for a taxi drivers who can take one stuff uh, from one direction and get into other directions. And I, people just gave me this uh, asking for we need this one. Can you please uh, find a vehicle with a, a driver? Okay, okay, I'll try. And I using my social media try to find these uh, drivers. Like there's a lot of a uh, lot of logistics uh, problems wow. when you have a war in your country. <laughs> wow! Uh, yeah, I, so from and, this point of view, it takes a lot of time. And For people now, are I'm asking looking... you because you have what? How, you have a like a what? I forget how many, but a Big lot following. of thousands of Twitter followers. Well, I have, for now I have fifteen thousand in Twitter and uh, ten thousand in Instagram. Okay, so yes, pretty a lot of uh, asking. Uh, I see. Sometimes uh, for now I'm looking for ammunition for this. Uh, how to say? Okay, um, bulletproof vest. On... A bulletproof yeah. vest, or is that what you're? Or no. Yeah, yeah, this defense for your body. Uh, yeah, armor <laughs> proof vest remember. or armor yeah. or some sort. Yeah, yeah. armor proof vest. Yeah, so you're trying. Stuff. How do you go about finding that? You just you, sometimes you, at- you can find it in other country and ask your friends in other country to be in Ukraine. Sometimes, for example, last uh, few days, last week, we find uh, manufacturing uh, manufacture of this stuff in one of the city in Kiev uh, in Ukraine. It's Poltava city. Manufacturer of the order- bulletproof vest. Yeah, manufacturer yeah. bulletproof. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. now we order the stuff from this city for Kiev, for example. I I uh, I can say that I do a lot of stuff. When you have war in your country, you always think you did not enough to help. Yeah. You always want to do something more, but you cannot do all the stuff. So you try to do as much as you can. And like in f- in first two weeks, I do a lot and i feel so exhausted after this two after these two weeks and i cannot do anything like five days because i just feel exhausted for now i feel a little bit better and i even start to find a job because in this situation for now uh, we don't need like i don't need to find the food or ace i need to find money to buy something from ammunition stuff because like problem with food or AIDS, it's not so important in Kyiv for now. It's much more important to find weapon. And from this point of view, I want to say to you in Americans that Red Cross is a fucking bullshit organization. I've been United saying that forever. Nation, United Nations is the same. I have friends. I have friends who worked in United Nations in Ukraine in their kind of office in Ukraine, and uh, he don't want to leave Kyiv. But the organization, the United Nations, write him a letter and say, you need to escape or you will be fired. This like United Nations works in a conflict situations or Red Cross too, as I know. And for example, it's not so necessary to um, give your money 
donate your money for Red Cross or Na United Nations. So they grab some food for our refugees in Poland. Our refugees in Poland, they have enough food, yes. enough aids, enough health. Yeah, they need money for weapon to get back our territory. So from this point of view, Red Cross United Nations spent a million of dollars, I don't know, for what, for sneakers and for water. That's uh, not uh, that we need for now. Our president says that Ukraine need uh, just one percent of NATO weapons to push Russia back. It's not so many, and this all we asking for now just one percent of these aircrafts and tanks to push Russia back because Russia is. Uh, uh, no, I'm not a military analytic, for example, but I can see that Russia. Uh, have some victories on our territory only because of the number of the people, not because the quality of these people, the quality of this weapon, just because they have millions of people that will die in Ukraine, millions of these thousands of these tanks and planes. And we have like, I don't know, 10 planes, like 1,000 tanks and a lot of people who wanted to kill Russians. And only because of these people who wanted to kill Russians, we uh, struggle a month, I suppose, very good from the. You you can compare size of Ukraine and Russia size and understand how it's difficult to struggle with them without aircraft, for example. Well, what do you think has made Ukraine so successful so far? Because everyone thought this would be over in like one week, and now yeah. it's been a month. Yeah. And as we said in the opening. Russia has now decided to change their strategy, it seems like, yeah. and pull out of yeah. here and focus on the they, eastern region. And they're starting to tell their own people in Russia that, well, we only wanted the eastern region all along, so this will be a victory. If we get the east, this is a yeah, victory. Russia is so funny. Russia so is so is, funny when you listen is, here. How has Ukraine been so successful? What strategy? Is it strategy or is it just um, the, the willpower will? or what is it? I think the main uh, thing is people. It's only because of people. Because if we start to calculate mathematically our chance to victory, it's very low chance because the size of Russia, the size of Ukraine. But uh, as I understand, Mr. Putin and uh, Russian's military government, they live in a, some kind of world in their head that Ukraine is a a very weak, uh, small country, and all the people afraid of Russia, and they start to run away when they saw the Russian soldiers. But in fact, they see that even old lady will go to the Russian soldiers with a weapon and say to him, I will kill you, motherfucker, <laughs> go away yeah, from we my saw country. That. We saw that. Yeah, yeah. and she is out the weapon. She's without the weapon. So it's, uh, it's even for me, even for me, that's so uh, I, even difficult to explain it in English because our people is so marvelous and uh, it's even try difficult to believe what people do in Ukraine for now to struggle with Russia. All these um, meetings in, in Kherson, maybe you see, maybe you saw uh, when like Russia takes Kherson, people with weapons, Russian soldiers on the square. And people without weapons just go on the square and say to them, go away from our city. And Russia start to shoot in air, even in people, and people don't go back. So it's this is the, this is the reason why Ukraine struggles so long, just because of the people. Yeah, and also we need to say that our, power, our government is not so stupid, and we all understand that Russia can attack us. So because of that, we start to train our soldiers. We create this system of territorial defense, uh, guys. This is uh, not funny, but uh, like a surprise story for me that Ukraine start to um, train this uh, territory defense, like people who will train to defend their cities if Russia will invade. So it's not professional soldiers, it's just regular guys like me, for example, who get some uh, weapon and learn some tactics like a couple of months. But for now, this territorial defense uh, army became like a similar, like usual army, because we have some kind of uh, uh, part of the territorial defense uh, people attacking uh, Russian territory. Uh, Yes, it's so difficult to talk in English <laughs> uh, <laughs> about war. I even, I even have a joke like before our last uh, podcast uh, when I was in Barcelona 
after this podcast, I have a couple of jokes for my people in Ukraine that I have a podcast with guys from uh, USA and okay. I talk about war in Ukraine. It's so difficult to talk because my level of English is a middle, not a military intermediate. So it is difficult <laughs> to me. To... Well, no, I understand so what you're saying. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, territory, I territory defense guys uh, uh, fighting with usual Russian army and win sometimes. So wow. it's like... Uh, insane this is people without and experience do you know um so misha was telling us that around his building some of the people who live in the building are kind of like patrolling not military people just regular people got right. some guns yeah. and they're kind of protecting yes. the neighborhood yes is that happening where you are and do you know anyone doing that yeah it's happening it's happening all over the country people uh have weapon even people without weapon petrol in their, their cities uh, my friends in Balta have the uh, usually territorial defense uh, for me it was like for uh, town stuff they have territorial defense in village and in this village they don't have enough uh, weapon and <laughs> all this stuff but they try to try to control the situation of the village and this uh, very cool uh, yeah what else I can say about this no, that's okay. So they're, they're patrolling so, well, even without weapons, but they're just they're just a presence that they're willing to. Yeah, saying. sometimes yeah. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember if my friend have weapon. My friend Denis Duma, if he had weapon, I'm not. As I, we, maybe well, he we saw a picture weapon. of you. I can't, with I can't stay accurate about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, that's. Uh, I'm not sure how funny is it, but. Uh, uh, maybe in the beginning of the February, I start to understand that maybe sometime in my life I need to shoot in some kind of people. <laughs> maybe it's just it's like a feeling. I am not sure. Yes. When I decide to train, up. yeah, like it happens in when you live near Russia. It always happens. You sometimes can start to feel maybe I need to shoot someone. <laughs> so I try to learn some stuff, and I uh, have a lesson of sniper shooting in Whoa. Kiev with my friends. Yeah, uh, it was pretty okay, as I understand. But one lesson is not enough uh, to uh, to go to territorial defense or to regular army. And I, as I understand, if I will come to uh, our like army center in Kiev and say, okay, I need a sniper weapon, they will say, uh, no, <laughs> you will not get a sniper. Because they don't just hand them out to anybody. You got to <laughs> prove your... Yeah, maybe you, have, you can have a knife, for example. Can you do <laughs> this knife something? I they're can like, cut some meat. Yeah. They're like, bread. you have a lot of followers. We need you. You put, <laughs> put things yeah. together. You're too valuable to be out there. <laughs> so I need to get more Twitter followers, by the way, I realize yeah. now. If so we ever I have, have a have, war, I don't want to be my putting <laughs> I want to be putting people together uh, like yeah, you. I, I have my friend comedian. I have my friend, comedian, my colleague, comedian, Sergei Lipko, he is in army now. He is in territorial defense, and he are going to go like up in a regular army because he, he was in army for one year in his past, and now he decided to go to army. He also have a lot of uh, followers in Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> but he decided to, uh, to kill some Russians too, <laughs> to uh upgrade this uh, <laughs> amount of followers because if you kill russians and you're you in ukraine you have a lot of followers you get a lot <laughs> of <viral. laughs> a lot of tell this your tell, uh, well kaplan's daughter wants to be a youtube star so tell her that's the way forward cap that's the way to do it kill yeah, some russians if she, kill russian yeah, soldiers wants, we'll go down to brighton beach no <laughs> yeah all this all no, this the giveaways soldiers, not just kill people soldiers. okay yeah, all right, not just, gonna, yeah. That's yeah, if she wants, if she wants, she can kill just people Russian. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay for me. <laughs> Uncle Anton says that's Anton okay. Anton says it's okay. It's a defense. Yeah. You can tell for sure that these giveaways are not working. When you kill Russian, that's much more adorable unboxing of a rifle, yeah. sniper rifle. Un unboxing <laughs> girl, girl. tanks. Unboxing tanks. Yeah, that's nice. A Molotov cocktail. <laughs> You're laughing. You're laughing, but uh, our soldiers are so fucking funny because they always do some fun videos about Russians. Uh, <laughs> of course they tanks. do. They, they already did Hit the that subscribe of, button, of everybody. <laughs> they did unboxing. They just, oh, here we have, here we have, here we are. Like dead Russian? 
here we have yeah dead russians and some tank so we open oh this God. tank you can see this type of weapon here you can see this uh, like medicine here russians medicine this food okay this truly unboxing stuff is very unboxing fun. youtube videos oh my yeah, god it's nice um all right well we should take a break kaplan um speaking of becoming a star we're part of the world's smartest podcast network and this is some of the best shows on planet earth you got uh, Professor Andrew Heaton with the uh, Political Orphanage podcast. You have Dr. Andrea Jones Roy with the Majoring in Everything podcast. And you have us, Lost in America, Kaplan. These two brains. This World Smartest Podcast Network is really, it's really taken off. I was doing shows in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago at the Laugh Factory inside the Tropicana Casino and Hotel Resort mm. and Casino. And yeah. Flex. the show ended and this couple came up to me. And they go, hey, and they point at me. I'm like, what? They go, world's smartest podcast network. There you go. Look at that. And I was like, what? They go, We've, we, we listened to, we're Heaton fans. They're Heaton yes. heads. They said their cousins got them tickets to this show. They didn't know it was me because Tom Rhodes is the headliner. They said mm. when I got on stage, they recognized my voice from our from, podcast, from, from like the round tables, tables and it, everything. Yeah. And then they looked me up while I was on stage and they're like, that's the guy. And so they came uh, up and took pictures after with me. Amazing. So, yeah, we have another round table coming up this week. So Oh, we okay. do. Yeah, we have one coming up this week. We, uh, so everybody subscribe to all their shows and um of course our Patreon. And Kaplan, now a word from your local sponsor. All right, we're back. Thank you, local sponsors. Thank hopefully you so not, much. Sponsor. Hopefully not Russian borscht brands or anything like that. But <laughs> I no, hope not, we won't. Not even who we was the guy? Who, Karl Marx got canceled, even though we, he's German. Karl Marx got canceled, even though he's German. Everything Russian is canceled in America. You'd be happy to know. So, oh yeah, no, that's nice. That's nice. I will not <laughs> Russian salad dressing off the menu. Thousand Island, everybody, put a little yeah, relish did, in it. It's Thousand Island now. <laughs> did you have a lot of uh, Russian stuff in the USA that they can cancel for you? They like, canceled like Tchaikovsky and like you know oh, things that oh, like, no. oh dead, no, kind of ridiculous dead composers. <laughs> dead composers who had nothing oh, to do with God. any of this. Yeah, no, so never forget that now. amongst all this, here. Anton, Americans are idiots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't forget that. But our hearts <laughs> That's in the, the right major place. lesson to our show. Yeah. So, um, what about so in Kiev? So it's have you seen? Because I guess the attacks that are coming, Russian soldiers have still not got into your city, right? It's just yeah, these are yes. flying over and they're dropping bombs. They tried, tried, but they can't can get in city in Kiev. And does that feel like now that they've announced that they're kind of giving up on Kiev? Is that is that a major victory for you? I never, uh, I never believe Russians. You you need to. Uh, okay. Negotiations with Russians is you know what it's like. It's never you can, you can. Uh, I'm a little bit tired, so I start to mix it up my words. No problem. It's difficult to to believe Russia because they always doing not they saying. Yeah. And if for now they say, yeah, we'll take some uh, army from Kiev to, I don't know, to the east or to the south. So, so uh, when I heard this information that uh, soldiers, uh, Russian soldiers near Kiev will go to the south of my country, I'm not feel better, you know, because I know that Mariupol will attack more and the Donetsk and Lugansk regions will be mm. attacked more. So it's not feel uh, comfortable. And Russia is this kind of country that can say, we will take army back and then uh, attack you at night, like in a four uh, o'clock. You, so you don't trust difficult. Putin's word is what you're saying. Putin's words or any Russian word. I don't trust oh. any Russian word for now. That's too difficult. So you agree to with Anthony them. Blinken, our Secretary of State? <laughs> yeah, said, yeah. Secretary of State His Anton. Name, his name's Anthony, so that, yeah, I agree with him. <laughs> totally, agree, totally agree. Oh yeah. Do you know anyone yeah, but, in um in the cities that have been attacked, like Maripol and no, all Maripol those places? Maripol is really bad. Yeah. Do you have any friends in those places? Uh, I don't have a lot of friends uh, who in, in Maripol right now. Uh, I have friends who live in Sumy right now. In Sumy, this is my comedian friend Felix. And he already made a couple of videos, comedy videos from Zoom. And I wrote him and asked how you did this stuff. And he has a video, a parody video where he uh, filmed this video near a Russian tank. And I asked him, uh, you have a Russian tank near your house? He said, 
I have a three of them, and I even can to choose uh, what <laughs> which uh, tank to use, what of, which tank to use in my video to make more followers in oh my, my video. Gosh. And I say, it okay, just... that's that's really interesting time to make content <laughs> in the internet. <laughs> so right. what's it like? Like, have you talked that, to him? I want to say, I, I want to say, ahead, Anton. One, I, I want to say one, one important thing because you need to know, and Americans need to know that uh, it's maybe some. Uh, can sounds funny, but uh, for now, Ukraine capture more uh, tanks from the battlefield than partners gave for us from other. Wow! We've captured countries. more Russian so tanks than, we, than we've given you stuff. or other. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so people need to remember that. And the then official you use them? number there is, I think it's 537, the Kiev Independent says, that you've, I don't know if this is captured or blown up. Oh, yeah. No, this, uh, I don't think we capture 100 tanks. That's too much. No, no, I know. I think it's like, I don't know how many, maybe 50 tanks or maybe 100. I'm not sure about that. But the president says it's uh, the situation like that. It's, uh, I say that because USA, a lot of countries, except German uh, <laughs> helps us really, really good. A lot of money, a lot well, of the Germans need aid. their natural gas. They don't want yeah. to pay more for natural gas. Yeah, yeah. But but we need a uh, little bit. We need weapons. We need weapons. All this need weapons. Have a victory. So humanitarian is fine. Money is fine. But weapons much more need. I even I even. Uh, Um, I think you're Anton for, cut out a little bit. Yeah. Right okay, it's working. Uh, we didn't yeah, hear that say last that thing. For, yeah. Start that sentence over. I need something. For now, I'm working. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, it's fine. Uh, for now, um, in Twitter, uh, we have. Uh, do you know this? Like audio rooms in Twitter, when you can talk, and like in Clubhouse was, but now. Oh, it's like in the Twitter. private rooms where you can talk you, you, to people. Yeah. Yeah, private rooms. Uh, we have uh, uh, one very popular private room in Ukraine. It's a room about war situations. We have a couple of professional guys in this room who works in this. Uh, you send money for the organizations back alive. This Ukrainian organization that helps uh, our warrior soldiers and the head of the organizations are the main guy in this room. And uh, this some kind of podcast where these people, this guy and a couple of soldiers talking about weapons uh, we need for Ukraine, like a podcast about weapons and how to buy a weapons. And I always listen to this podcast before my sleep to have sleep well, because when I hear information about how to buy a tank, it's uh, I feel more confident and more nice. relaxed. In you can buy a tank? <laughs> I, I can buy, but I know what kind of tank I want to buy. And if you in USA to try to um, put some money for us, I want to ask you to buy a HIMARS or HIMARS. Uh, we need oh, wait, HIMARS. say that again. <laughs> it got a little yeah, fuzzy. A bit... What kind of tank HIMARS. do you want? HIMARS? HIMARS. HIMARS or HIMARS. Like an adopt a tank program we could do? Maybe some of our listeners can help how, out. Yeah, uh, how much for one how much, tank? Uh, how much for HIMARS? I'm not sure. We could raise this money. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. How, I mean, it's a Russian like tank. This, how much can like a million dollars, probably. <laughs> if you oh. listen to have a million of dollars, you can help. Us. We have some rich <laughs> listeners. We have very wealthy What, what about your local just... sponsor? Maybe you can ask your local sponsor. <laughs> to our local sponsor? <laughs> Based on what they pay us, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if our local sponsors, but we do have friends who've won. And they've been nominated for Oscar Award, you know, Academy Awards. We, have some uh, we know rich nice. people. They would definitely buy a tank for you. <laughs> so HIMARS, this is a high mobility artillery rocket system. Is the newest member of the multiple launch rocket system Mallorys family. Okay, this is totally USA uh, stuff. So you can oh, so we can probably get a discount, Wal hometown discount. That just go to uh, uh, Walmart, Walmart, and take. <laughs> <one> <laughs> <of> this, uh, <laughs> I don't sell <laughs> tanks. I know America's crazy with guns. They don't actually sell tanks yet at Walmart. I didn't but, realize Michael yeah. Moore movies were seen in Ukraine as well. Yeah, <laughs> but what? So you can. So if we, if you get a million dollars, how do you now buy, get the tank? You just buy it on on Amazon or something, or online? Like where do you buy a tank? Oh, I'm I'm sure I can't do this, but our uh, organizations like Back Alive and uh, some kind of oh, that, they, they can. can they just buy it. That yeah, this is so uh, um, because they're very close to our government. These organizations they have these consultations about what kind of weapons we need, what kind of weapons we can buy, where we can buy this stuff, and even the the head of the organizations in this podcast um, he always says it so. Uh, 
strange time for him because for now, sometimes he can spend like, uh, I don't know, like a uh, $10 million in a day. He spends uh, some kind of this money to buy some kind of weapon for Ukraine. Wow. And it's a little bit nervous for him too, because it's very a lot of, uh, it's a big sums of money. Sure. That's great. That's crazy. crazy. Do you know uh, I'm anyone? not sure about Amazon, but it's it can be very uh, comfortable if you can do the stuff on Amazon, like like <laughs> quadrocopters can bring us the tanks and like a drone. Oh, oh, they the drop them off. Like yeah, like a drone. What drone so, delivery? Yeah. In the, I'm curious as to the towns where Russia has. You know, I know we've learned that Russia is taking over a lot of small towns to make it seem like they have these big victories, but really yeah. the, the major cities are still in Ukraine hands. But for yes. the places where it is the small towns, um, what's life like for the people who the Ukrainians who live there? We've read that a lot of them flee and they leave the country, but some of them have been taken on trains to Russia. Have you heard of that? Uh, we have some kind of news, yeah, like this, like people go to Russia. But uh, as we learn after that, mostly of these people uh, was. Uh, forced to go to russia how to yeah, say yeah they didn't want to go they were forced to yeah go. They, they didn't want to go this because just soldiers say go to russia he decided, and then okay. what they're like what they're in an internment camp in russia or what happens to these people i they're, don't really know about that uh, yeah is it people who have family in russia and they're just no, like they're just, they're just capturing like captured, little villages okay. and then putting everyone on a train and sending them to russia it's like very uh honest. Um, I'm sure that a lot of these people just don't have a choice because where yeah. the city is uh, under Russia and military people on the street and you can't go to Ukraine. So maybe sometimes is there one, uh, the last your chance to still be alive to go right. somewhere sure. in Russia. I will, I will not uh, feel uh, like uh, bad for this. I'm, I will not judge these people if they decide by themselves because uh, it's a war situation. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. You got to stay alive. But do you know anyone who's living in these towns that Russia has like taken the, over? I'm curious as to what uh, life, life is like for those people. Did I, do I know people who go to Russia? Who live in the towns? Start? Just the live in the, the town Russia's in captured. Ukraine. They're still there, no. but Russia's in control. I mean, a lot of people are asking, what does it yeah, mean? Yeah. What is it? What happens when a foreign military comes in and just takes over your city? Like, I don't have... Uh, direct connections in, with people from Kherson on Energo, or Energodar or uh, like Mariupol for now. Yeah. Mm, but uh, sometimes I see the tweets in Twitter and people tweet the tweets from the cities like I'm from Kherson and usually this tweets like I from Kherson and we will never give the city for Russia. Just believe in us and if you can help some kind of money or something like that just to help us yeah as i see as i see like a general mood people wanted to fight people wanted to struggle and don't want to give the cities for russians for now and it's like so all, people, i always see this in social media yeah, yeah. The people don't want to make like a deal like we'll give up like we're turn, we were saying earlier like we'll give up some parts of the east in exchange for peace like the nobody wants that, this right? deal nobody wants this deal and uh uh, <laughs> we want to just put Russians away from our country. And what about and, a deal uh, where they said we will, we'll we'll take the Donbass region or whatever, but then you're allowed to become part of NATO, and mm -hmm. then so that we can't attack you anymore. Is that a deal that anyone's put on the table or not? Uh, as I understand, as I remember, the last uh, the last deal was about that. Uh, we can be a part of uh, of uh, European Union. Yeah, we cannot be a part of NATO, but we can be a part of European Union. So for now, that's pretty okay for us. And uh, in Ukraine, people, we understand that uh, America can't uh, close uh, sky over Ukraine, and we understand all these petitions. Like I, I don't even uh, sign up these petitions. Like take one million petitions to ask you say close sky it's it's a bullshit all we need now right. is just web we can we can close the sky systems and we will close this by ourselves for now as uh, i'm not sure about a strategy like whole strategy of our government internet connection 
Is yeah, it, you had said I, you had just okay. cut out, but you can repeat what you said, and we'll just keep it in. Uh, Anton, uh, you were talking uh, from about my point of view. Yeah, uh, you were talking about that. It cut out when you said we don't. We understand that the U.S. cannot close the sky. Yeah. Yeah, we understand, but we know that we can close the sky by ourselves. We just need planes, we just need air mm-hmm. defense systems, mm-hmm. and we'll close the sky ourselves in this okay situations for Ukraine. And for about negotiations with Russia, as I understand, uh, uh, the most... Uh, okay, we asking them to leave the borders uh, that was on the 24th of February. That's uh, the main, uh, like, uh, the first point of these uh, negotiations. But uh, for me, it is difficult to imagine like Russia just go away from Kherson city or just go away from Mariupol and say, okay, we will go away, we will leave these towns, okay, and just go back to the Donetsk and Luhansk and Crimea, for example, and Russia. Uh, for example, for me, that's okay. Situations if uh, Russia go back to Crimea and Donbass and Lugansk, I understand that for now we don't have enough uh, weapon and people to get back Crimea and get back Luhansk and uh, Donetsk regions. And for now, maybe we need to get more weapons after years of years, and maybe Russia government will change and we will get back the territory a little bit later. For now, that's very important. Uh, to get the borders we have on 24th February for now. Back to those borders. But, but even even in these situations, that's so difficult to me to imagine that Russia just go back from Kherson, for example, or go back from Mariupol. And the stuff they made in Mariupol, that's, I don't know how to describe the stuff. It's like, uh, it's not a tragedy. It's like uh, killing people on the streets. They, <laughs> they need to get a full punishment from the world about that and because of this situation about situation Mariupol and here's a lot of the cities uh, for a lot of people in ukraine it's now um, they are not agree to uh to uh, to leave this kind of con- uh, okay one more time for a lot of people in ukraine for now it's not okay that russia will stay in donbass region or lugansk or crimea yes. they want to the territory back because we all we all see that russia will not stop if for now for example russia will stop invasion and go back to donbass and lugansk and crimea they will say okay we have a peace with ukraine that's fine but we all understand that in a in a year in a two they years did it again. In a five they did it again because they always did it russia always did the stuff they always yeah. did this right they had the troops already stuff. in these some of these regions before in February, yeah. right? Like they had it since 2014 yeah. in the Donbass region. And- what do you think? Yeah. I don't know if you saw, but Joe Biden uh, said yesterday or two days ago that Putin needs to be taken out of office. He said and, that off the cuff and then he uh, back, and then, walked it back. And then, Amer- <laughs> and then his people, like the U.S. government, kind of said like, oh, we don't mean that. We don't want to. We're not yeah. saying that they should change regimes. But then Biden kind of doubled down on it. He said, well, that's my opinion. That's what I think. Yeah, but then he said he didn't say it, too. So, oh. so but he clearly <laughs> said it. He went off the script. He was like, yeah, yeah. but yeah, he did say well, it. For sure. uh, that's nice opinion. But you need to understand that if Russia will change the one guy like Putin, the system will not change. Uh, it's oh, really? So- you think so? No, that's so easy. Th- mm. It's so easy to think that it's only Putin's problem, it's only Putin's war, because a lot of people in Russia like Putin, a lot of politicians uh, have the some kind of same use. And for example, this is uh, the main opposition in Russia is Navalny, right? Navalny, yeah, in Alexei, in Friend the prison. The uh, he always uh, looks like I'm the main opposite power against Putin. But even uh, there is an interview when uh, journalists asking uh, Navalny about Crimea and what he will do if he become president. And Navalny didn't say something like, yeah, we will get our army from Donbass and Luhansk, we will free Crimea. No, he just said, we will thinking about that. We will see. We will see what we can do in Crimea and Donbass and Luhansk. 
from uh, so from this point of view, uh, Russia needs not only change Putin but uh, change, change all the politician systems, and it takes a little time. Because for now, a lot of Russians are not uh, how to say. Uh, Russians, just just Russians, like not Putin, like people in Russia, they're a little bit upset that Ukrainians are so angry. <laughs> they are so angry for all. Uh, Russians well, say, it's think... not our war. It's a Putin. It's not me. But all the Russians have responsibility of the Putin uh, makes all the, the, their country do all it's this difficult. stuff. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's I mean, for Russian cause... people, they're scared that if they do anything, yeah, they'll be killed. Yeah, I know they're scared. You know, I mean, but I, I understand but that. But he's saying we're scared, too, and we're doing I get like it. the Ukrainians. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I see both sides of this. Yeah. So do I. I can see either side. It's 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 pretty difficult what about uh it's not so, me it's it not means it's like we want to kill all the russians yeah, <laughs> no, yeah no no i know, know. I know. Something like that but it's so strange to read these uh, articles and social media posts from the russian the people other who thing... say oh it's so bad it's so bad situation in my country all oh, helps us in russia well we i mean no we're, we're, it's bad because they're president because right. the, the world sanctions sanctioned are because them. of what they're doing yeah because of exactly. what they're doing yeah. the problem is that they're not getting any news that's opposite they're, they're getting fed so much propaganda right now without well, any this, opposition media that's right? interesting uh situations too because for example i read one interesting thing uh, thought about that there's propaganda as as a as a symbol of russia propaganda is really a comfortable way for people to say i don't have uh anything to do because of propaganda right. because of propaganda i don't have enough information but it, 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 every people in the world each people can understand that russians uh, type of garment is a no, bullshit <laughs> all this putin stuff all their yeah. strategy all this stuff in georgia in chechnya right. you, you you don't need to be a wise super wise man to understand that your country is like a piece of shit like a nazi german uh, so propaganda is just comfortable like to say oh we don't have enough information so because of that i don't it, it's I the lebron james uh, excuse have when talking about all this a country I used to live okay. in. Oh yes. What about uh Zelensky? Are people because like what do people think of his like the whole media blitz he's kind of gone on where he like he spoke to the American Congress, he spoke to other world leaders Canada, about like oh, Canada, yeah, Israel yeah. about like the, the no fly zone idea that you said Zelensky. that people yeah. Oh he freeze. Zelensky is a legend. No, Zelensky is a, is a legend. Okay, okay. Oh sorry, can you go ahead and now? Yeah, yeah, Zelensky is a legend for now in Ukraine and I think in the world. And I even have a I start a couple of jokes about it. I saw his uh, his stand up, how to say, <laughs> in the Parliament of uh, USA, in Parliament of Japan, in Parliament of France, and he had like you know like four this or five this video. Uh, con uh, video uh, this video on a day like five or six and I start to think uh, I just trying to uh, translate my joke in English <laughs> a little bit difficult he was a comedian and I was thinking did he have situation like okay for them I'm start my my beat in Japan like in the morning and uh, <laughs> after that I can improve it a little bit and be the best in France, like a little bit later, like my hey. open mic in Japan, and yes. then like uh, <laughs> Japan's the open mic club. U.S. You want to close in the U.S. Right? That's the yeah. headline show. You, you're going to close. U.S. Congress <laughs> is your. <laughs> and he no, he's tight, this. He's, he's tightening, tightening the, the act. Material. He's tightening, he's tightening the act. act, the act he yeah, yeah. He Israel thought, okay, was like this, the Brooklyn room, you know. <laughs> yeah, this punch was not so strange, strong, so I need to change it to much more stronger stuff. Okay, yeah, you got to get a bigger hit. It. Yeah, I'll check you know it in what? Italy and then goes to USA. <laughs> Did he do any local material for each place? He, <laughs> <laughs> he writes local as he goes. <laughs> Anybody here from? Yeah. What else? Anybody you here against? from? <laughs> Shout out! We're my ladies. We're my yeah. fellas. But you know, I hate to tell you because I know the first time we ever had you on, we were we we saw this coming, and we, you just you gave us a whole profile of Zelensky, the comedian president. At the yeah. time, you weren't a big fan of his comedy act. But here people are really into like people keep sending me clips 
of Zelensky in movies and Zelensky in show, <laughs> and like everyone yeah, thinks he's hilarious here. I, I, he's, he's really America's been good. biggest comedian. He's right now. He might be hosting the Oscars next year. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one allowed. Will Smith, to Will Smith will punch him. <laughs> no, I, I'm not sure Will Smith can punch Zelensky. Nobody ah, can punch Zelensky. Yeah. Give it a so try, Will Smith. His show is on. The, the, his <laughs> own show try. is now on in Netflix in America. They're running it. So. <laughs> he hosts the nice. Oscars. Do we want to do? Do we want to have a late night show with Zelensky after all this stuff? In, yes. In, in, yeah. Actually, this is the most brilliant idea ever. If Zelensky hosts the Oscars, he'll be the first comedian in history that you're like everyone's scared of. No, right. No one like, will go on stage to try to fight him. He might be the only person who can successfully host the Oscars going forward. Because now will the, work with hecklers much more better than Chris. Yeah, yeah. it's now Ricky Gervais person. should write his jokes for him, and then because no. <laughs> <laughs> it's been set now that whoever's doing the jokes, you can just go on stage and attack him, and then you'll and if you do, the, you'll win Best Picture. So yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the best, the best movie is a movie about Ukraine destroy Russia. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's go on the stage. Um, and, what about your family? So are you living there with fam- like parents and family oh, where you are now? I'm sorry, you asking so- something more about Zelensky? Or did no, about I just you. shift the theme? Oh, about you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm comedian too. About my family, my family in the Nikopol city. Okay. Mm, Nikopol city for now is not bombing, uh, under bombed. Uh, it's little, it's pretty quiet, only air sirens. That's yeah. all. But, okay. uh, mm, Nikopol city is on the one part of the river, on the one side of the river Dnipro, and on the other side of the river Dnipro is Energodar city. And Energodar city is under control of uh, Russian soldiers. Oh, wow. So, uh, for me, uh, they, uh, calling me and asking me what the what i think maybe they need to um they don't want to live they want to since my, my parents are really, really old so they don't want to change the type of life for now and i try to uh for in these situations the best way just to not nervous too much just uh, try to be confident uh, try to be relaxed a little bit so I tried to say to them, Mom, don't even thinking about Russian soldiers in Nikopol because Nikopol is a is a hole, and nobody wants to go in Nikopol. Even Russian soldiers, it's the best <laughs> city. You know? This is a shithole that even Putin doesn't want. Yeah, shithole. Yeah, if, if the rockets get in Nikopol. Uh, some kind of people even will be happy because oh we have rockets in city for now <laughs> something there's something interesting in our city for now that's Excellent. like we talked about this turner before how in my hometown in pennsylvania it's my small town during the revolutionary war with england they hid the liberty bell there because they said the english aren't even coming here it's such a <laughs> yeah, in allentown pennsylvania, like that, yeah. pennsylvania well, so it's, that's really, it's that's really maybe your sister it's cities Allentown, we're sister cities <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a black jokes, uh, but uh, I try to like a uh, little bit lower the nervous sure. situations. Sure. Okay. Something Got it. Like um, well, I don't and, know. And what about, I think, uh, go ahead, Cap. I, I was gonna say your your friends. We saw that there was like an underground comedy scene in some areas in uh, in the Ukraine. Were you thinking of bringing yes. that to Ky- Kiev soon, or how did you know anything how it went? Or uh, how they yeah, it off? for on Friday. On Friday, I'm going to open uh, mic in Kiev and try. I try to do like a five or seven minutes of uh, joking about dead Russians and all of this stuff. <laughs> Whoa! But, uh, but what about uh, do the one about sh- that you just told us about your family and the 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 the. <laughs> The German, Probably yes. The Russians. You are bomb. my open mic for now. That's yes. a good bit. <laughs> do you, and do your Zelensky bit about the, yeah. Yeah, just checking the bit on you. Yeah. So where uh, yeah, are these, these shows happening in bomb shelters? Yeah. Yeah, it it was it uh, not will be like a bomb shelter, but we have a lot of uh, underground uh, like uh, like a bars in Kiev, bar in underground. So that's a comfortable place to uh, to have a show and feel safe before this uh, time we have to go home at eight o'clock. Oh, yeah, in the evening we Early have show. to go home. Everyone of us. Yeah, I'll try. I, I'm not sure how I will feel about that because for now, uh, for me, that's pretty okay to ri- write uh, like short jokes for Twitter or something like that. But to write something long, uh, I'm not sure I can. I'll try. I'll try and see how it works, and we will collect some money for our army on these yeah. events. And these bars are open. Are bars open right now around the no, city? Like, no. 
No. Okay. I mean, like the hookah bar is not open, right? They don't have. I mean, there's no supply oh, yes. chain of tobacco <laughs> coming in, right? For the hookah pipes, or it's. I don't want to. I don't want. Uh, even in war situation, I don't want to have a stand up in a hookah bar. Just yeah. this is the Bad worst vibe. place to have a stand up. Oh yeah, my god! Like a crowd. Hookah bar crowd. Smoking so, anything? And they're not yeah. a fun crowd. They're like, yeah, hookah bar. And what about? Um, you said you mentioned to us that you got a, a haircut. How did like like are places like barbershops even open? <laughs> or like how do you find? Is that yeah. an underground guy or you? Americans, you can see that I'm in Kiev uh, under war, have be- a better haircut than Michael's uh, yes. in, uh, <laughs> Michael. in New York. That's <laughs> the Jufro I got going here. <laughs> yes, just came to Ukraine to have a haircut. It's much better. Yeah, yeah just, uh, we have one of my friends in this shelter. He has a friend, a barber, mm. and he asks them, can he came and have a haircut? We will give him money. He said, I can do it for free because he make a haircut for our soldier for example it's wow. his free time for now but we, we give him money and he makes a haircut and for this was um i was uh, uh really um nervous a long of time and after this haircut i feel really good because when some kind of guy uh touching your head oh, you, got the full. <laughs> you start to feel it oh it's usual life i have a haircut is, did he, yeah you get the warm cloth. Do they do the shave in the back. Yeah, thing? yeah. Life's getting back can, to normal. I can give money to some kind of guy. Well, I yeah, bet it's a very you, valuable thing, by the way. I bet that's no, how you're going to feel. Yeah, it's very valuable. Anton, um, after your stand-up set, I bet it's going to feel good. Exactly. I bet you'll love doing it. I, I, I suppose. I, I am, mm, I'm not supposed to forget the words. I hope. I hope. I hope that we'll be like this. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, I'm not sure in future I want to make a lot of stand-ups, even, even for collecting money for army. I'm not sure I want to do in stand-up shows. I will do a job, my scenery job, and I'm writing jokes for kind of, some kind of uh, some shows because yeah. we will, as I understand, maybe a couple of shows will start to uh, uh, work in, maybe in a week, like really? radio show maybe start to work in. No, not so like it was before, but in some, in some kind of way it will start, more wow. shorter. We will we will um, we will record our jokes on the phone and just send to the radio station and they will just mix it up and yeah. make some kind of uh, short show. Uh, and so I write, write jokes for my uh, Toronto television show. It's a special show about it's always talking about politics. It always talk about politics even before war. So for now, yeah, really this like, kind yeah. of show is very important for my country to talk with jokes about serious stuff. Uh, How is the average person wow. making money? If no one's going to work anywhere, what are, what are people doing for money? Oh, uh, that's work a from home? difficult yeah. question. I'm not sure. Uh, you need to ask more accurate. For me, I'll, I'll find my job, like my part job on radio, for example, on my uh, writing work. Um, uh, some kind of cafes, uh, cafe some kind of cafe yeah. start to work and they work like three hours in a day not mm-hmm. so all day working but three hours in a day they worked and sell the coffee for example uh who else a lot of my friends are just working with computer they don't need special office to work just okay. like i i Wi-Fi. Front, uh, front end developer don't need to have an office to work and if For you're example. a barber, by the way, you got this is why it's a valuable job. Go to haircut school because yeah, you get you, any, because, every every bomb shelter needs a barber. Like you're always going to be very valuable. Yeah, we can, I think we can uh, change the name of our underground stations in the name of uh, working places. Like we have underground stations, uh, I don't know, like Obolon. We can change it like in a uh, haircut station and every yeah. people in from oh, the yeah. city what, what's, go what's to the skill station. Is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the world of hair cast on this station. And other station is about, I don't know, the yeah. hookah station. <laughs> hookah <laughs> station. It's great. Great idea. All right. Well, guys, yeah. I got to run. I got to get to a flight to uh, Australia. Get to so. Australia. <laughs> yes. Anton, you thank please, you so can much. Can you please man. ask Australians to, to uh, send us money too? Maybe some weapons in Australia you can find. Uh, cheap skate just, Australians. I guarantee three to four tanks. I I'm, I know some thank rich you. Australians. I'll find them. If you don't, yeah, come out of there with three to four tanks. You failed on your trip. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it, Anton. Thank you so much for doing it. If there is a uh, genuine, where can we send people to donate money? Because a lot of people are going to be asking after this episode. I, 
suppose I will give you a link on Back okay. Alive organization. We'll, we'll put it in the we'll put yeah. it in the description of this show. Yeah. Yeah, on the description. All right. Thank Google you so much, Anton Tamashenko. Kaplan, what should we do? Yeah, it's great to see you. Stay safe and uh let's get lost. Get Thank lost. You guys. Viva Ukraine. Stand, stand with Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs>